But before we go there, I um, just want to go off on a slight tangent. Uh, and it has to do with giving credit to the stars in a, uh, in a discipline. I mean, the, the, the arts people talk about uh, Steichen and Stieglitz, talk about uh, Weston and Adams. Some people don't particularly care for Adams. That's kind of besides the point. These names are important names in the history of pictorial photography. Well, there are people like that in technical photography as well. Although uh, Lartigue, okay, is not a luminary, a major figure in the art world, uh, I did mention him as, as somebody that uh, created a photograph that is still talked about today. It's a weird photograph based on focal plane shutter distortion, the rolling shutter effect. <coughs> so, in the same vein, I would like to point out one of the most um, accomplished photographers in time-lapse photography that I know. Uh, he's the author of this little book. It's called My Ivory Cellar. And if you wanted to, uh, and his name is John Ott. Okay? Uh, it's uh, the story of time-lapse photography. If you want to, ever wanted to read and get acquainted with a person who was totally dedicated to a particular aspect of photography, especially time-lapse photography, and without a college education, but he figured out things, John Ott comes to mind. So he's, in, in my estimation, he's Mr. Time Lapse. Uh, I must admit that all his work was done previous to digital, but it doesn't matter. He solved problems that were extremely complex, all having to do with time lapse photography. And the results that he, that he came up with, uh, due to patience, perseverance, are just super. So if you wanted to read about somebody, that somebody in time lapse. John Ott comes to mind. But one of the first things that, that he mentions is the fact that he engage, wanted to engage in some kind of time-lapse photography. And the problem that he had was trying to figure out, well, yeah, I realize that I have to make these pictures one after the other, but how much time should there be between pictures? That's sort of at the crux of somebody who engages in this type of work. Because you could figure, well, I'll just run, I'll just run the camera, you know, at full tilt all the time for a day. Well, uh, you get problems with this. How do you store the pictures, you know? How do you store the pictures? Probably the, the worst one. And then once you got them, then you say, well, now what do I do? You got all these pictures. And then you only need every tenth, or every fiftieth, or every hundredth. So it, it is uh, prudent to try to understand how you make a decision as to how much time should elapse between photographs that are made, that are intended to be shown as a time-lapse sequence, movie. It, it can be determined based on a number of factors. One of them has to do with how much of a, of a difference you want, or a ratio you want, between how fast an object moved originally, or how long it lasted, versus how long it lasts on a screen. I like that particular approach. And I don't know why. It's just my gut feeling says that's a good way to do it. And from a philosophical point of view, it still has to do with the fact that you have to make some decisions at the beginning. Because if you don't know, in 
that case, you're, you're proceeding blind. However, again, from a philosophical point of view, if you don't know anything about something, it is sort of pointless to do nothing. Because nothing is going to happen. The thing to do is to do something. And then see, as they say, what comes out. And then you critique it and you say, oh, you know, I learned something from this and now I can improve on things. So well, let's go back to, the, uh, to the, the question that comes up when you say, well, what should be the rate or what should be the time interval between photographs intended for a time-lapse application? So, if you go by what I suggested, the first thing that you want to do is to say, well, how long does, well, there are two, two things. How long does the event last? And I, I mentioned one day, right? And I want that day to last some time on a screen. And then I said, screen, one minute, right? So this might be 60 seconds, right? And then I say, well, what rate will the pictures be shown at? I can go back to my standard. This will be a video standard. And it will depend on, on what the application is. But in this case, we're choosing video standard. So 60 seconds at 30 pictures per second, right? So that's a total of zero, uh, say 18, 1,800 pictures. Correct? You agree with me? I need to secure 1,800 pictures during the course of a day so that when I project them back at 30 pictures per second, I'll project that whole day in one minute. So if I know that this is the number of pictures that I need, now I want to find out how long one day is. And I could either do it in minutes or I could do it in seconds. So one day, 24 hours, right? <coughs> times uh, 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute. And that's uh, 86,400. Uh, great. What is it? 30? 86,400. So that's how many seconds there are in a day, according to. Right? So I say, I need this many pictures and that much time. So time and uh, if you do that now can you tell me what it is twenty eight forty eight forty eight seconds between photographs. Yeah. Now I just set my uh, time-lapse instruments so that every 48 seconds I take a picture. The rest of it is downhill. Now the other thing I can, uh, I can do, is this tells me the time between pictures, but you know, suppose somebody says, well, how much faster will uh, things appear to move during that one minute period? than for real. That's sort of time magnification. Right? Let's see. Well, I could compare the two times. Right? So time magnification would be uh, on screen time. Divided by real time. 
Time, uh, time magnification in the uh, uh, time lapse world, this is always going to be a fraction because things are going to last longer. Right? I mean, they're going to last less. So my on-screen time is uh, oops. my on-screen time is 60 minutes. I mean, uh, 60 60 seconds. Right? Can divide this by 86,400 uh, seconds, and out comes a fraction. And uh, can you do this one for me? It's going to be 0 0.00 something. It's going to be a very small number. Three zero six nine four. <coughs> okay. Our time magnification for this case, when we compress a whole day into one minute, is going to be x times. Time magnification, again, just to repeat myself, is fractional. In the time-lapse world, it is whole numbers in the high-speed photography.